there are all sorts of things that can conspire to make your pictures soft and soggy and you've got to know what they are and how to control them. So I thought I'd go through my top five tips to make sure you get the sharpest pictures possible. But the place to begin is to make sure your picture is sharp whilst you're still on location, whilst you're still there. Because if you go home and then look in the computer and go, oh, blast, I like that shot, it's really soft, and you try sharpening it in Photoshop and Lightroom and all that stuff, you can get away with it to an extent, but it's not great. How do you check when you're on location? See this bit of sinky boat here? Let's have a go with that. Come over here a bit. Right, let's take a picture of the sinky boat. I don't want it just there, I want it over there a little bit. Sid Brown trying not to fall in the water. So let's line up my shot, turn on my camera, it worked better. Get my feet out. Let's do a bit of sinky boat and wood. That looks quite good. So I've taken my picture and then in the back of the camera, I just zoom in on it and make sure it's nice and sharp before I go home. Because if that was horribly soggy, what I've got to do is I find out why using my top five tips and then do it again and make sure it's sharp. I can hear the question now, how, do, how much do I zoom in to 100%? I don't know, it depends on your camera. On my little X-T1, you just dial in all the way and it won't go beyond 100%. Sorry, can't help you, you may have to look in your book. Okay, the next step is we need a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Come with me. I always find that the best thing in the world is a piece of cake and a cup of tea. So I thought we'd demonstrate blurry pictures with them. Here we go. So first off, my number one bad boy for blurry pictures is camera shake. Let's just see if we can demonstrate some camera shake for you. I'm gonna take a picture of this pretty looking cake and coffee. See what we can do. Right, so camera shake kind of looks like that. No part of the picture is sharp at all, none of it. And it's caused by the little movements of our hands. Human beings are not rock steady, we move all the time. Those little movements, those little jumping aroundy movements, they have to be frozen. It's very, very noticeable when you're getting close to something or if you're using a long lens. You know, stuff jumps around in your viewfinder, doesn't it? Your shutter speed has to be fast enough to freeze that movement or you'll get a blurred picture through camera shake. I'm not going into the full equation here because I've already made a video about it. But generally speaking, what you need is to have your shutter speed at least as fast as the focal length of your lens is long. You may need it to be longer if you have a crop sensor. Generally speaking, get it, use the fastest shutter speed you can for the aperture you want to use. Hmm, it's pretty good. Are you rolling? Yes. <laughs> Professionalism. Now, the next one is not so much a case of the picture is soft as the wrong part is sharp. This is about controlling your autofocus. Let's say we're looking over this way. I want a shot of the cup and the cake, and we're gonna use a little bit of the background there with the pub and there's a sky and all that sort of stuff. But I line up my shot, and what I end up with is something like that. It's not so much as the picture is soft, it's more a case of the wrong part is sharp because I didn't control the autofocus. Autofocus doesn't know where you want to focus in your picture. So you have to take control and you have to control it yourself and tell it. So the shot which we really want is gonna be something like this. With the cake sharp and the background just a little bit soft. Control your autofocus modes. I've already made videos about this one. Go and learn how to do it, and then you're gonna be able to keep your pictures nice and sharp and have the correct bit in focus. Hmm. It's just such a shame you're on the camera, Christina, because you could be enjoying some of this yourself. Now, depth of field, that's another one. We've looked at focus in the wrong place, but what if you want all of it sharp? What if you want your cups and your background sharp? That means you've got to learn how to control your block of sharpness backwards and forwards and all over the place. So how would we do that? Um, I've made videos on it, but I'm going to do a very quick, just kind of give you an idea. If I focus somewhere around there, if I can get my camera, there it goes, and shoot that with a small aperture, you see we've got more depth of field. So looking at your depth of field 
That is my number three tip to making sure you've got sharp pitches. If you want lots of depth of field, use it. Provided nothing is moving, the cure-all is to use one of these things, a tripod, because it ensures your camera isn't moving. It's gonna hold it nice and still. So regardless of how slow your shutter speed is, you're gonna be able to have a nice still camera. I know people say, I don't wanna to have to carry a tripod around. I don't want a heavy tripod. But that's the cure-all, you know? It's the only thing you can do. So let's say you wanted that big block of sharpness, as we talked about a moment ago, lots of depth of field. That's gonna mean a small aperture. That's gonna mean a slow shutter speed. That's gonna mean you're in danger of the first one, which was camera shake. So that negates all of that problem. So let's say I wanna take a nice picture of the diminishing cake. I control my autofocus, put it in the right place, and I want it on the fork and I focus on the fork and I take my picture and it doesn't really matter about the shutter speed because nothing's moving. Let's say I want to try and make it a bit sharper. I want to make the background a little bit more complex. At this distance, that's not going to be so easy. But again, I can slow that shutter speed way, way down and have a sharp picture. The tripod is the cure-all, whichever way you want to do it. Don't ignore tripods, don't be lazy, get a tripod. That is my number four top tip for making sure you get nice sharp pictures. And finally, it's pretty obvious, you really want to keep your lens fairly clean, didn't you? Now don't go into too much of a panic about this. And also don't go into too much of a panic about cleaning your lens. I've already done a video about care of your equipment. You may have seen me poking my lens with the end of a fork. Lenses are pretty sturdy, so don't go into worry about how much you can clean it and how often you can clean it in case you damage it. I even heard stories online that going on the end of it and huffing with your breath is gonna deteriorate the coatings. I tell you, if there's acid in my breath that can deteriorate coatings on a piece of ground glass, I'm seriously worried for what's going on inside my throat and lungs. So, let's have a little look. Let's assume you're a very clumsy person who likes to eat cake, and on top of that, you never actually bother to put your lens cap on, or your lens hood indeed, to protect it. So you've been shoving bits of Mm, mm, cake in your mouth and then you've got your sticky fingers all over your lens like that right and you've got nice sticky dirty bits of mm, sugary icing is that going to affect your picture let's have a look do you know what it gives you a lovely arty effect doesn't it but here's the thing all you have to do it really isn't a big deal <sighs> a good huff a bit of microfiber cloth and away you go. Get it nice and huffed on. And give it a good old clean. Now I put a lot of sugary fatty icing on that lens just then. So it's taking two or three good huffs and a damn good rub with a microfiber cloth to get it off. But it does come off. You truly don't have to worry about it that much. There we go. Up to the nose, smells like a rose, up to the light, clean and bright. What does our picture look like? Let's get a little arty bit in the corner here. Of just the edge of the fork and some cake. As you can see, it's just all gone, okay? It's not a big deal if you get something on your lens. Don't worry about it. So, my five top tips for keeping your pictures nice and sharp are Watch out for camera shake. Be very careful with that one, it's the worst offender. Number two, make sure you control your autofocus. Don't just let the camera do it for you because it may focus, but in the wrong place. That's not a soft picture, it's a picture that's focused in the wrong place. Number three, look after and control your depth of field because you're in control. How sharp do you want it? Do you want it front to back sharp or do you just want a little bit of sharpness? It's not out of focus, it just means you haven't got as much sharp as you wanted. Number four is to use one of these bad boys. Use a tripod. It's so simple and it means you've got sharp pictures. Surely it's better to go a bit more slowly. Use a tripod, take your time and go home with loads of sharp pictures than go home with a hundred that are all soft and fuzzy and hopeless. And of course the last one, number five, don't go putting cream all over the lens of your camera. And if you do, it comes off pretty easy. I'm gonna eat the rest of this now and you can't have any, Christina camera woman. So my top tips are, 
Watch out for camera shake. Be careful where you're focusing. Choose where you're focusing. Don't just let the camera do it for you or it'll focus in the wrong place. Number three. What's number three? I... She's laughing at me. Can you see her in the video? Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.